One month from tomorrow, 9-11 will be five years ago. Maybe the big picture still startles you, still hurts you. Certainly the details can still cut, can still illustrate most poignantly and most painfully what happened that day. In our third story in the countdown tonight, there are more details. 30 hours worth of audio tapes detailing six and a half hours of real time from 9-11. The tapes are from NORAD, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, and they contain the voices of personnel at our nation's Northeast Air Sector, a defense sector, NEADS, NEADS, located in Rome, New York. NEADS' mission was to protect a half million square mile of airspace on the East Coast. The tapes are detailed at length in Vanity Fair magazine by the man responsible for their release, Michael Bronner, a producer on the film United 93. Mr. Bronner posits that the tapes bear out the chaos of our nation's military response that day and even the Pentagon's cover-up of that chaos later while explaining its response to the 9-11 Commission. In a moment, the analysis of investigative author Gerald Posner. We've selected only a fraction of the 30 hours, obviously, to excerpt tonight. When you listen, keep this in mind. Needs personnel were expecting an exercise that day. Major Kevin Nasapani, the facility's commander, was among them. Hi, Boston Center Team U. We have a, a problem here. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New, New York, and we need you guys to, we need someone to scramble some F-16s or something up there to help us out. Is this, is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise manifest. Is he inbound to JFK? We, we don't know. <laughs> you don't know where he is at all? He's being hijacked. The pilot's having a hard time talking to the... I mean, we don't know. We don't know where he's going. MCC, I don't know where I'm scrambling these guys to. I need a direction, uh, destination. Okay, okay I'm going to give you the Z point. Okay. It's just north of uh, New York City. A plane just hit the street. What? No, sir. The 737? Hey, what? The World Trade Center. Who are you center. talking to? They have a second possible hijack. At almost the same moment, United 175 slams into the South Tower of the World Trade Center. But since the crashed plane cannot yet be identified, there is confusion over whether a third hijacked craft is in the air. That fear would prove prophetic. Meanwhile, the two scrambled F-15s had finally taken off from Otis Air National Guard Base on Cape Cod. But by the time those fighters were within 100 miles of New York, both planes had hit the Twin Towers. The pilots could see the smoke. Major Nasipani begins to discuss the option of shooting down a civilian airliner, though only President Bush has such authority. After reports of a third hijacked airliner, confusion mounts. But it does produce an appropriate order to scramble more jets. Give me a location. Third aircraft hijack heading towards Washington. Okay, uh, American Airlines is still airborne. 11, the first guy, he's heading towards Washington. Okay, I think we need to scramble Langley right now, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the fighters from Otis and try to chase this guy down if I can find him. Are we going to shoot him down if they got passengers on board? Have they talked about that? The chaos, the web of mixed communication, the lack of adequate information, all continue. Needs personnel still can't match hijacked planes with the ones that have crashed. They believe that many more planes may have been hijacked. Here is another excerpt coming 12 minutes after what we now know to be the end of the attack. United 9-3, have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. He's down? Yes. When did he land? Because we he had confirmation. Did, he did not land. But Needs personnel had no way of knowing the attack was over. Fighter pilots would spend hours intercepting hundreds of other aircraft deemed suspicious. As promised, our great pleasure to turn to Gerald Posner, author of Why America Slept, the Failure to Prevent 9-11. Thanks again for your time, sir. Absolutely, Keith. One shocking element coming from the tapes, a hijacking exercise was planned the same day. Uh, some personnel also talk about the attack being far worse than any simulation. Having heard this, do you think these people were even remotely prepared for this kind of event? 
No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I mean, they clearly were prepared, if anything, only for a hijacking. And a hijacking exercise really means they take to the air, they follow a plane five miles behind the plane itself. If they really are concerned, they can fly up near the cockpit to see if the pilot's in some type of danger. But what they weren't prepared for in any way whatsoever was a suicide mission like we saw on 9-11. That caught them completely flat-footed. I suppose that uh, conspiracy theorists will find a virtual treasure trove in the repeated references in here to shooting down planes. But the Vanity Fair story says that the president didn't give the authority to do that till after United 93 had gone down in Pennsylvania. Why then was there so much detailed discussion about it ever done on those tapes? Well, be, uh, because at some point the fighter pilots started to think, what are we going to do uh, if these are suicide bombers or hijackers taking these planes into public and government buildings? Are we going to be able to shoot them down? But I will tell you, I've listened to these tapes, many, most of them, and it's very, very clear from them that President Bush doesn't even give the shoot-down order, as you pointed out in the lead-in piece, until 15 minutes after the planes are all down, the attacks are completely over. If these tapes prove anything, it is not complicity, it is not conspiracy, but it is total ineptitude. Ineptitude between the civilian parts of the government in air traffic control dealing with the military and also ineptitude and almost keystone cops in the chain of command inside of NORAD, the military unit that's supposed to be protecting us. They certainly weren't able to do it that day. Do they also prove that the Pentagon was trying to cover up the vastness of its confusion that day? Yeah, I think that what surprised me in these tapes and is really the most disconcerting in many ways is that I've listened to the testimony of Pentagon officials before the 9-11 Commission and before Congress and they made it sound as though they were initially confused and then they got it together and by the time Flight 93, the flight that crashed in Pennsylvania was on its way back to Washington, they were aware of it, they had scrambled planes and they were on the way to intercept that flight. It's just not true. They found out about Flight 93 after it was already down. And what these tapes show is that the Pentagon officials decided to spin this. They decided to make it sound better, that we really weren't caught with our pants down. And you know what? It was silly, because eventually evidence like this is going to become public, as it has now, and it makes it look as though they were either spinning it or part of a cover-up. They weren't being straightforward with any of us in the American public. Why is this evidence coming out now, and why through the auspices of a movie producer at a magazine, and what does that say about our domestic counter-terror preparations? Boy, it certainly doesn't say much that's good about our domestic uh, terrorist, counter-terrorist uh, you know, preparation. Uh, journalists like myself apply through Freedom of Information Acts all the time, asking for information just like this. So how does the government go about deciding that it's going to release the transcripts of the key tapes that are going to fill in part of the puzzle of what happened on 9-11? They give it to a producer who puts it into a national magazine to publish. That's the way the government's releasing this information. Not to the 9-11 panel, not to a historians who are doing the work. And this is one of the reasons the government continues to get slammed on this. You know what these tapes show, Keith? That Dick Cheney was informed about Flight 93 one minute before that flight went down and later told the public that he was sitting down with Bush to figure out if they would shoot it down. It's just not true. Gerald Posner, author of Why America Slept, The Failure to Prevent 9-11. As always, sir, great. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.